Stellium, how's it going? Whereabouts in the world are you? I'm in Spain, on the Mediterranean. You're in Spain? Yeah. Originally from the States, though, from California. Oh, okay. And, you know, you're going to have to, like, kind of set the table here for us lay people about your area of expertise. Do you want to just describe, you know, what you do a little bit, but in simple terms? Well, professionally, I'm a chiropractor. Um, before that, I had a number of years in, in IT, and um, I've been in Spain now for 11 years working as a chiropractor. And um, that's not why you brought me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've, I've uh, for the last three and a half years, I've had a YouTube channel called Stellium 7, um, where I have presented a lot of diff different information about uh, what I've taken to calling biogeology. It's the idea that, that maybe the timelines of, um, that we've been given when it comes to geology and how old things are and how they've actually been formed might not be as accurate as, as we were, were taught to believe. So, yeah. Where have these timelines come from? Are some biblical perhaps? Yeah, well, I mean, you've got, you've got uh, the heliocentric model, which is giving us timelines of 16.4 billion years for, for the age of the known universe. And then, and then the, um, the world itself being something like 4.6 billion years. Then you got the biblical narratives and there's all kinds of different ideas about how old the world is based on you know, how many generations. And then you've got a lot of um, extra biblical texts, the apocryphal texts like the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher that talk about um, what we consider to be mythology. You know, the Titans, different, uh, different gods, different cataclysmic events and um, so I grew up, you know, believing like most that most of those mythological tales were, were myth, they were allegory, they were, uh, you know, uh, I studied a lot of Joseph Campbell when I was younger, he was into cross-cultural mythology and, uh, and religion, and looking at, you know, the correlations between them. So um, all of the different cultures of the world have these, these cataclysm tales, flood tales, uh, dragons, you know, all kinds of different things. So giants titans and of course i thought that was mythology for a long time but um, about five years ago i came across a whole lot of different uh rabbit holes to to explore and um the more i the more i went down them and, and the more i studied the more i realized that maybe not everything that we've been told about our reality is true so kind of got into a bit of reality hacking and, and questioning the unquestionables really things that you're if you start to question certain things, you're considered an idiot. You're considered very foolish, and the science has already decided on those things, so we don't need to go down those those pathways. Well, let us unpack some of this more slowly. Then <laughs> I subscribe to Tolstoy's quote, whereby the highest flight of wisdom is to admit that we know nothing. <laughs> and it sounds to me, you know, every generation has the experts which say such a thing but it constantly gets revised so these multi you, you know these estimates of the billion you said 16 billion years four billion years whatever it was do you think hundreds of years from now we'll look back and see that those estimates were plucked out of the clear blue sky i don't think they were plucked out of the clear blue sky i think they were they were put in place to justify narratives about the nature of our history and our reality um yeah, and as far as how old things are and, and timelines, I'm not the one to to make any draw any conclusions about that. What my research is focused on is really boots on the ground things that I've I've been looking at and examining here for the last several years. And um, I, I was watching. I, I'm new to your channel, so I, I just watched a first video with you last night. And it was um, who was it? Somebody Robinson, and you were talking about. Um, you're talking about the the marijuana stuff and things that happen with uh, all of that, and um, you know, I, I I from very early on when I was 19, 20, my dad gave me a couple of books. One was The Emperor Wears No Clothes, and the other was Behold a Pale Horse. So, in my late teens and early 20s, I was already <laughs> pulling back the veil and looking at secret societies and the structure, the power structures, and symbology and occult stuff, and uh, so. 
you know, I've, I've always been one to, especially for the last decades to, uh, when I hear something, I'm, I'm like, okay, is it true? And how do we know that it's true? And truth is a very slippery thing, you know, discernment, how do you discern whether something is true or not? And so many people are, are just basing it on what the authorities tell them or what science says is if science has a voice, it doesn't have a voice. You know, they, they talk about all scientists are in agreement about and then X, you know, and that's never happened in the history of the world that all scientists were in agreement about anything, you know, even something fundamental like, you know, gravity, you pick something up and drop it. Lots of different uh, explanations for how that could come about. The fact that it's happening isn't in question, but why and how do we explain that? That's a different thing. Yeah, I've got Behold the Pale Horse on the bookshelf behind me, actually. So I, I just I just ordered a new version that it didn't have one of the important chapters, which was uh, silent weapons for quiet wars that was taken out. So you're saying then that vested interests are manipulating the public with this data that's untrue? Maybe not. Maybe it's just as simple as paradigm blindness, you know, that we are we grow up believing a certain set of beliefs because that's what everyone else believes and that's what we've been indoctrinated with whether it was intentionally or unintentionally you know we can have uh false ideas about the nature of our reality and then present them as truths and then other people believe those things so i think it's a good idea to question everything <laughs> so if you look at medicine how medicine has evolved you know at one point uh human excrement was was used as a, a medicine that people would ingest uh, bleeding, cutting people and letting their blood out was the, you know, most modern cure for this and that. And if you look back at it from our perspective, it, it seems like complete madness. A thousand years from now, when they look back at this generation, what do you think they will perceive? Well, especially the last few years, they're going to think it was a comedy or, or some kind of a, you know, <laughs> reality television show because, uh, you know, we've collectively kind of lost the plot, I think, as a species. <laughs> um, or at least the plot has been lost for us by people who have a vested interest in obfuscating truth. So do you think there are more sinister forces at work uh making people believe these things as opposed to it just being mass psychology oh yeah yeah i mean you don't even have to be a conspiracy theorist you can just go with what's been declassified and all the different various projects from the letter agencies from paperclip to monarch you know read read up on you know mk ultra these kinds of things there's all kinds of sinister stuff going on behind the scenes so yeah without a doubt and and the the power structures of the world are are definitely, uh, you know, controlled by the in the hands of a very few, and they all have these interlocking secret societies. So, you got yeah. a question from one of the viewers, a Nexus. What is the most non-mainstream discovery you have encountered? Well, I would say my own, um, and um, the, the the first uh, thing that I discovered. Well, I'll just back up a little bit. A friend of mine, uh, a guy named Alex Michael. He's a uh, He's a musician. He's also known as conspiracy music guru, and some refer to him uh, affectionately as the flat earth, flat earth man. Uh, he's he's, uh, he's a very entertaining musician that uh, does a lot of videos that are looking at uh, different NASA, uh, you know, bloopers and uh, all the different uh, ways in which that particular organization and SpaceX are not necessarily telling us the whole truth, you know, and uh, so. When I met Alex about five years ago, he started talking to me about cosmology and earth shape. And I thought this guy is <laughs> off his rocker, you know, and I just ignored it. And then the next time I talked to him, he brought it up again. So I thought, oh, I, I need to go and start to debunk this. And uh, the, the, the further I got into trying to debunk it, the more complicated it became, it became because the things that I thought were going to be easy weren't, you know, oh, pictures from space. Well, most of them, if not all, are cgi creations you know live feeds the the curvatures being being you know faked with a fisheye lens so there's there are all these things that it it shouldn't be that way if it's what they're telling us and i'm not saying it's it's flat or that we're on a disc floating in space but i think it's different from what they're telling us and that was really what got me to start to open up to the idea that 
maybe some very fundamental aspects of our reality are not what we've been told. And maybe we should open our minds and, and, and look at things. Well, I have uh, a lot of faith in the empirical world. <laughs> you know, it's concrete and I can, I, can, uh, I can go out and I can look at things and I can observe and I can try and discern and make, uh, make, draw conclusions for myself. So, yeah, that combined with, uh, with um, looking into things like uh, cataclysms and these ancient, these ancient beings, very tall, got me looking at this mountain that's uh, right here in the town that I live in. It looks very much like an elephant lying on its stomach with its head tilted back. And I always loved it because it looked that way, but I never once for a minute thought maybe it was potentially a real Titan creature that had fallen and turned to stone. Um, and it's still, you know, as it comes out of my mouth, I, I can hear that it sounds totally nuts. This thing is three miles long. Um, but it's got an, it's got a cave that's exactly where an eye socket would be. It's shaped like an eye socket. And I had hiked up into that cave on numerous occasions and I knew exactly what it looked like inside. And I always puzzled over the formations that were there. And I'm like, how does this form by water erosion and tectonic activity? Cause I, you know, I understood the mainstream model when it came to plates hitting and, you know, tilting upward and that gives us our mountains and then they break off into pieces and smaller pieces. And that's where we we get our stones from. And uh, so I started looking at this mountain on Google Earth from a bunch of different directions. And I realized, wait a minute, it's not just one angle. It's multiple angles. There's like a canyon between the legs. The, the, the eye socket is right where it should be. There's, there's a cutout between where the head would meet the shoulders. And, and after that first hour, hour and a half of just looking at it on Google Earth, I'm like, this is bizarre. Because I, I understood even before the concept of pareidolia, which is seeing a pattern, seeing seeing something that's not really there. You, you know, at, it, I do abstract art and I can see things in the artwork all the time. So, you know, you, that's that's something that, that a lot of artists are able to do is, is see things that aren't really there. So I said, if there's any truth to this at all, I should be able to apply the scientific method to it. And, and I went to school to be a chiropractor. So I st <laughs> studied the scientific method quite a bit. And I, I know a lot of anatomy. I studied histology. So I'm like, well, before I just go off the deep end with this entirely, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my anatomy books. I'm going to get online. I'm going to look at 3D anatomy of, of elephants, of, of vertebrates in general, and, and create a laundry list of things that I would expect to find if there was any truth to this harebrained idea. And so that's what I did. And the, um, and the second video is all about that. I went up to the eye and I'm filming, I'm photographing. And in that in that visit, I found between eight and 10 different anatomical correlations, a couple of which were very, very specific inside the eye socket. That's gone up since then, because it turns out that there's also the remains of an eyeball there. So uh, that just in the eye socket alone, there's between 15 and 20 anatomical correlations. So this is where you get into mathematics and statistics and what's known as proofs based on logical consistency. And is there any uh, possibility that this could be true and how could you how could you prove it if it was there's not exactly a test of titan kit and mainstream geology would laugh at such a thing so i'm not going to get any funding for research on on something that would completely undermine the cornerstones of the entire geological paradigm right so but this is what i was talking about with paradigm blindness if there's any truth to it there could be a concerted effort to just sweep it under the rug and and uh, mislead us about the nature of our, our physical world in a whole variety of ways. So what would be the point of doing that? And that that's a deep question that, you know, we could probably talk about for for hours. But, um, uh, you know, it's it, it's a it's a fascinating thing, because when you when you start to look at into why, well, if Titans were a thing and and Titans are something that you can mine, I, I'm 100 I'm percent convinced that the great trees were also a thing. So great trees. We've got our myths of Paul Bunyan. We've got our myths of these, these different giant beings. Uh, and, and there's a lot of evidence for the great trees. So if you look at the mesas that are cut off, they look like tree stumps. You've got Devil's Tower in, what is it, Wyoming, uh, looking very biological. All kinds of different opinions about what that really is. But it looks a lot like a tree stump, and you can zoom around on Google Earth and see it. Uh, but there's a there's a channel called Hangman 1128. And this guy for the last four years or five years has been going out boots on the ground and just showing unequivocally that the great trees are very much a real thing. 
So I encourage people, if they think my, my ideas and, and the stuff that I'm presenting on my channel is just way out there and they can't even begin to accept it, go to his channel, look <laughs> at his footage. Because if you, if you see his footage and you watch five to 10 hours of this footage, you'll come to the point where there's no doubt in your mind that those trees actually did exist. And they were six, eight, 10 miles in diameter. And you can imagine how far up into the heavens that would have stretched. Wow. So it sounds loony, um, but, you know, maybe that's the reason something like Avatar was the most, you know, highest grossing film of all time. There's some kind of a, a memory that we all have within us that, uh, you know, we we feel something for that that subject. That, uh, yeah. yeah, Carl Jung talked about that. So we are quite literally walking and living on the remains of those that lived before. What does that mean? Well, it's a different one as well, because I, I personally, I believe the universe is, is, a, is fractal in nature. So I don't know what the world is. My, my suspicion is that we live in some kind of a, a toroid. <laughs> uh, and it may be like a cell that's inside a, a, a larger body of a greater being. I, I don't know. I'm not attached to it. I, I have all kinds of different musings and theories about it. But um, the, the um, sorry, can you just re repeat the question? I lost it. <laughs> the, uh, so so we um uh, you've, you've had a, a load of questions coming from the viewers here um i i was asking you about literally walking and living on the remains of those that lived before and we've got about 10 ah, minutes right. left that's that's what i was going to say the rest is, of these questions you, in as well you've got um you know this idea of if if there's a three mile long creature then i don't see any reason why there couldn't be a fractal level up from that so maybe maybe the uh the continents themselves are creatures or parts of creatures and they're floating in the waters of the deep who knows it's you know it's th there's a a channel uh mud fossil university that talks about a 900 mile long dragon in the sahara every other video that he makes so you know, and, and that 900 mile long dragon is attacking a fish now that sounds totally crazy but there's you know plato wrote about about this this battle between the leviathan and the behemoth and he actually located the battle right in that area so it's it, that was one of the things that kind of got me going no, couldn't couldn't be. But but I had this mountain in my backyard, and as I started to look into it, I found item after item after item, and and that list now has gone up to fifty six anatomical correlations. Some of them are highly specific. In the unveiling a Titan series that I did, parts one through six, and I encourage people to go through them. Like the first one is an overview, and a lot of people hand wave dismiss it after the first video because they think it's so absurd. In that video. Right off the bat, I show the list of, of correlations, the anatomical correlations, both macro, super macro, and micro. I've gone, mic I've gone with microscopes. Uh, I've, I've gone in spelunking into the caves of the mountain. And, um, and it, you, if you actually take the time to, to go through that series, most people come out of it shaking their head going, wow, there might actually be something to that. And it, and it might not be so crazy as it sounds. One of the viewers wants to know where the Elephant Mountain is. It's in, uh, uh, it's right in between two towns on the Costa Blanca in Spain called Javier, spelled J-A-V-E-A, -E and the other is Denia, D-E-N-I-A. And so that, that's, yeah, go ahead. Are you familiar with Michael Tellinger's work, Refossilized Giant Bones in South Africa? Yeah, yeah, and he's uh, been doing a, a mud fossil museum that he's been trying to get together there. And he, he actually, some years ago, showed... Uh, a petrified heart stone and i hadn't seen his video on that uh, but that's a whole other line of research that i've that i've gone down uh and there's a lot of videos about that on my channel what i'm calling petrified organs petrified hearts specifically um i found a stone that uh as soon as i saw it i recognized the anatomy in the stone it wasn't just a chunk that had rolled around and eroded there was on the, just within a few minutes, I recognized eight different anatomical features. When I got the thing back and started going through the anatomy books and looking at things in 3D, that one stone had 24 or 25 different anatomical features. That's a huge number for one rock. It's not just me going, doesn't it look like a heart? Hey, it's a heart. You know, it's like I could show you I could show you hundreds of examples and I've got them all on my on my channel and you can go through the stuff and decide for yourself. I'm not making any claims about this being a fact. It's what I believe. And, and I encourage people to look into it. And I've taught, I've taught people how to recognize these reoccurring patterns because there is a definite pattern in the stones. I've had them CAT scanned. I've used microscopy. 
I sent them to a lab in, in the US and uh, they, they sort of did an analysis. I've done a whole video about that on my channel. It's called Paradigm Crushed is the name of the, the video. Um, and I really want to talk about real, real briefly the helical heart, which is the what is known as the myocardial ventricular band. Most people have never heard of this. We were taught what we were taught in school about the nature of the heart is wrong. We we're taught it's this four chamber pump that's pushing blood out to all the, the, the blood vessels of the body. Absolutely false. The heart actually works uh, with toroids. It's, it's a, with, with, with suction. And you can dissect the heart in a way where you can unroll it and it's one continuous band. And, and they've proven in a, whole, in a variety of different ways that there's this spiral nature to the way the blood flows through the heart. So the heart is way more mind-blowing and far out than any of us was ever taught. And the man who discovered that lives right, or lived right uh, at the foot of the same mountain. So there was this massive coincidence between what I was studying, what I was producing videos on, and then later I learned about this phenomenon. I went in to see if I could, um, you know, get in touch with the man. I found out he died years earlier, but uh, his work actually caused me to, to recognize a bunch of things in the stones that I hadn't seen before. So it's, it, it's very fascinating. Those are the two primary thrusts of the research on my channel. So if you've explored fractals then, what about the Fibonacci series? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that exists all throughout nature, all the, all the plants, all the, you know, the way, the way water flows, it's, uh, it's clearly the, the fingerprint of the creator in my, in my opinion. Next question has come from, let's have a look, Ziva. What do you know about the giants in South America, like the giant bones found in the Loja province, Ecuador? I don't know about those specifically, but I would say that there is a plethora of evidence for the existence of giants from photographs, even videos. Um, there's so many old, old articles where, you know, I mean, I, I think a lot of that stuff got squirreled away by the Smithsonian and disappeared. And I, and I think it's primarily because it doesn't fit the historical narrative that we've been given. You know, if you look at Scaligerian chronology, to me, it's a joke. A lot of people are talking about Fomenko. The guy's written like 100 different books, a Russian, Russian guy. I think history, you know, Napoleon said history is a set of lies agreed upon. There's some who don't even think Napoleon was was real. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I mean, this is this is, when you get into this kind of stuff and you go down these different pathways of research, you're really getting it's kind of reality hacking and it, it becomes hard to, to discern truth from from fiction. Kat wants to know. Is there a central theme to your research that unveils some universal truth that is be being hidden from us? Well, I would say I, th I believe we definitely live in a created realm. I think much of our past history is fabricated. And, um, and if something like biogeology is a real thing, this idea that petrification doesn't take hundreds of millions of years to take place, but could happen even potentially in the blink of an eye, if we had more time, I could give you lots of examples of biological transmutation of all kinds of examples in the in the geological record of of things that that are that should not be petrified that are, um, you know, and and uh, yeah, so I've, I've um, I would say just in the words of Eddie Bravo, look into it. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Bravo, he gave us a shout out for our Epstein coverage. That was a, a great day. Um, yeah, I like what you're doing as far as looking into kids. And, and um, I, I mean, uh, Ash didn't know anything about my past. I've got a book coming out in the next couple months called The Hacker Prince. I, I was a bit of a tr troublemaker in the, in the early 80s and got into trouble with hacking and uh, with computers and got caught. And I actually ended up going to jail for hacking. Uh, so I, I know you're an ex con, so I feel comfortable saying that to you, but yeah, I was, was this in California? Uh, had, no, it was in Seattle at the time. And, and, uh, if you look up, if you go to Wikipedia and you look up list of computer criminals and you scroll down to the table at the bottom, <laughs> I'm, I'm the first one on the list. <laughs> so wow. It's, uh, it's a crazy story. If you want me back on to tell you a bit about that, yeah, when, I, when I've got the that. book out, but I, I have the dubious honor of having been the first hacker in the world to go to jail for the crime of computer trespass so good grief there, that's going to be fascinating that. yeah all right we've got two more questions from the viewers i think we've got just enough time to squeeze them in so jake wants to know if truths are being hidden from us who is doing it and what is the motive and where is the evidence 
boy oh boy there's so many different societies that i mean you've got all the ones that are just in plain view like the world economic forum the council on four relations the Tri trilateral commission the bilderberger group the council of or, or the uh you know skull and bones freemasons i mean there's six million freemasons worldwide you know but i i don't believe for so i think the vast majority of those people are good people that want to you know do good things and and uh you know, maybe they're caught up in something that's sinister and maybe it doesn't get sinister until you get to the top of the pyramid. That's the nature of compartmentalization. And, and uh, you know, you, you, it's on a need to know basis, whether it's military, corporate, uh, you know, or secret societies, you're not going to know unless you're in the know. All right. And we've got a question here from Agent Orange. Where do you see organized religion in 30 years? Wow, uh, that's a that's another deep question because I think that there's kind of a new religion. We've got this combination of of heliocentrism mixing with this sort of Burning Man, modern transhumanist, uh, psychedelic, you know, hippie agenda that ties into trans dance and all, you know. And I and I think that's kind of the new religion where anything goes. Um, and uh, and you know, I, I would like to see a return to to nature and and working in alignment with nature. Uh, you know, when you find out about how the heart functions, I highly recommend my video, The Helical Heart, uh, or Helical Hearts, Petrified Organs and Synchronicities is the name of that video. And that talks about this cardiologist who made the discovery about the true nature of the heart. And it talks about the works of Victor Schauberger, who's the kind of the Tesla of water, you could say. Uh, and he understood uh, all kinds of things about water that we probably still don't even know today, you know, many and, and so the, the, the point being that his whole idea was to, to, um, to observe and emulate and copy nature. And that's what we need to be doing. And look at how things function and work in harmony with it so we don't destroy uh, the world we're living in and destroy each other. Huge thank you for coming on, Mike. Do you want to tell the viewers where they can find you and follow you? Um, you can find me at Stellium7. I think there's going to be in the liner notes for the show, they were going to put some of the links. Uh, and I mean, that's the easiest way I have a um, mail, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a mailing list that people can sign up for if they're interested in, in potentially getting an advanced reader copy of the, the upcoming book, uh, or if they want to um, just just to be in touch. Uh, otherwise, comments on the YouTube channel, I, I get I get all those. And uh, that's a good way to, to get in touch with me if you have any questions. I have a telegram, right. telegram channel as well. And you can find that in the, the liner notes of the videos. Good luck with the put and can't wait to hear the illegal computer trespass to computers at Microsoft, Sunstrand Data Control, Kenworth Truck Company and Resources Conservation Company, a Boeing subsidiary. Can't wait to hear that story. Take care, my friend. Thanks for inviting me on. It was a pleasure. Take care, oh, Sean. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. <laughs>